Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this sunny Sunday. Um, my name is Clint. I'm the leadership chair here at Community Covenant. Welcome. Um, I hope that this is a place where you can find rest and fellowship and worship and a, a place that you can see God in a new way than the rest of the week. Um, this is a family family Sunday, so uh, K through five will stay with us. It's also Communion Sunday, um, and. Yeah, I don't have much more to say except for I'm glad to be here and I'm glad that you are here too. Um, I'm going to roll us into our call to worship. So if you could stand as you are able. I'll read the non-bold words if you could read the bold words with me. God's greatness is wondrous to behold. Everywhere we look, we can see the imprint of God. From the loftiest mountains to the crashing waters of the sea, there God's greatness stands majestically. God's greatness can be within the human heart. Let us honor and praise God with acts of loving kindness and compassion. Thank you. In the spirit of this morning being a family Sunday, I asked my son, Everett to help me with the music this morning. So there you go. <laughs> All right, let, the, let us sing together. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are Every morning, new every 
great is thy faithfulness. You may be seated. All right, I'm going to uh, pass the plates for our offering this morning, and we like to say here that we, we want to have gratitude as the plate goes by. This is not guilt. Uh, if you are not a member here, please do not feel like you need to give this morning. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pass these. Take a moment as it goes by just to say thank you, and then uh, pass it to the folks next to you, or if you're on the end of a row, then you can send it uh, behind you. Now, I know some of you might be wondering where uh, Pastor Jeremiah is. Some of you even asked me on the way in. Uh, he was getting ordained by our denomination, the Evangelical Covenant Church. And so, yep, we have a picture of him up there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Claudia, our office manager, was able to uh, go to Southern California with her husband. So, she, she took that picture. I need to give her credit. And uh, as you see, Jeremiah is wearing uh, his stole there that you receive, uh, that one receives when they are ordained. Uh, Jerry said this morning, that's the stole he stole. But uh, so I, Jerry, I give you credit for that joke. But uh, here's the deal. Jeremiah hopefully is not going to watch this sermon online. And uh, next Sunday, I'd like to do a celebration for him. Uh, I'll get some cakes uh, for after church, for snacks, uh, we'll say, I'll say some things in the service. I'll take over at some point. And uh, if you feel led, maybe buy a card this week and jot something down in there, and we can just present him with a bunch of cards of appreciation next week uh, and as we celebrate uh, his ordination and the, the long road he's had of when he came here, he had to finish seminary, and he did that while working here full time, and then he had to do our denomination made him do a few extra classes and papers, and he had to defend the paper, and, uh, and it culminated in this. So uh, we are thankful for that. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite us as a church into a time of a prayer. Uh, this is a practice we've been doing recently. I will prompt you with a person or event and then we'll say, I will say, Lord, hear our prayers. And this is just an invitation for us as a church body to be silent and pray individually and together at the same time. That's a moment to, to restfully sit in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you're not comfortable with the idea of prayer, you can simply hold uh, the thing in your mind during this time of silence. And then after, the, after our time of prayer, then I'll invite you to all stand together and we will say the Lord's Prayer together at the end. And we'll have the words on the screen. So let us pray together. God, we meet this morning as persons who need your forgiveness. We seek your love and we celebrate your grace. We acknowledge your presence in this place and ask that you would hear our prayers. We thank you for other communities of worship here in Santa Cruz County gathering this morning. Specifically, we pray for Santa Cruz Bible Church. Uh, we thank you for being in the midst of the people of Santa Cruz Bible, just as you are in our midst this morning. For Santa Cruz Bible Church, Lord, hear our prayers. We thank you, God, for the pastors who were ordained in our denomination last night. We especially thank you and praise you for Pastor Jeremiah 
and the completion of his long journey toward ordination. Continue to pour your Holy Spirit upon Jeremiah for the work of ministry to which you have called him. For Pastor Jeremiah, Lord, hear our prayers. Finally, we thank you for the opportunity to host our unhoused friends each night this month at our church. May this month be a month of stability and rest for each person who stays here. For the participants in the Association of Faith Community Shelter, Lord, hear our prayers. invite you to stand as you're able as we say the Lord's Prayer together. The words will be on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing, and I'll invite you to find your blue hymnals around you as we sing hymn 449. Hymn 449, I Need Thee Every Hour.
seated. Uh, this morning, since Jeremiah is gone, we have the opportunity to hear from Sam Altus, and Sam is the director of the Association of Faith Communities, uh, which runs many things, I'm sure, but one of them is the shelter that is staying here this month. Normally during the rest of the year, they stay here on Monday nights, but we've decided to host them for the month of July. So we welcome Sam this morning. Well, good morning. It's good to be with you all again. Um, before I read this morning's scripture, I just want to make a couple notes. Um, first off, I'm sure you all appreciate Jeremiah a ton, but let me tell you, ordination is a really taxing process. Uh, so much so that I went through seminary and then did not get ordained because I was like, you know, that sounds like a lot of work. Um, so, yeah, show him appreciation next week when he gets back. It, uh, it's a lot. Um, and then I want to express my appreciation for you all uh, spending the month of July hosting our shelter members. Uh, as you can imagine, moving around to a different church every night can be really taxing and tiring. Uh, in the months that we get to be in one place for an entire month, uh, I can literally see our shelter members sort of like catch their breath and like let their shoulders down a little bit. Um, so thank you for providing that opportunity. Especially, um, I don't know if you know that you're doing this or not, but on the 4th of July, you're actually letting them stay all day. Um, and one thing that I found out working in homeless services in Santa Cruz is that holidays where our buses don't run are some of the hardest days on our unhoused neighbors uh, because they can't get anywhere. So they're just kind of stuck wherever they land for the day. And then because it's a holiday, we have a lot of tourists in town. And so they're sort of like ushered around by local authorities and business owners to try to get them out of the way. Um, so they can feel very unwanted on holidays. Uh, so you are sending them a very specific message of you are wanted and you are valued. So thank you for letting them be here uh, on the 4th of July. With that, let me read our scripture for this morning. Um, you all have been talking about Jesus and Jubilee, I hear. And so um, pick the words of Jesus found in Matthew 13. It's a familiar parable probably to many of us. Uh, it says this, That day Jesus went out of the house that he was in and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed, and he was scattering, as he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But the sun came up, it scorched the plants, and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants, the thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. In another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. The word of the Lord. Um, Jesus goes on to explain the parable, and it would be worth reading it. Uh, but for time's sake, uh, I'll reference it. But go back and check it out in the rest of the passage. Um, this parable, like a lot of Jesus' words, I think are, in my mind, more comedic and funnier than we often give Jesus credit for. Um, I've actually found it really helpful to read Jesus' words sometimes with like a little bit of a touch of lightness to it, because he is painting this almost comical picture of a really, really terrible farmer. 
Like, this farmer is not good at his job whatsoever. Um, I imagine this sort of cartoonish character, like, running around, probably skipping. I don't know why, but I think he's skipping. Just kind of tossing seeds all over the place indiscriminately. It doesn't matter where they land. So much so that some of them are just landing on the road, which obviously they're not going to grow on the road. He's just throwing them around willy-nilly. Uh, it doesn't seem particularly well planned, and quite honestly, it seems really wasteful if this guy purchased the seeds. And I think that actually might be a bit of the points, or one of the points of the parable, is the sort of uh, wastefulness of it. I think Jesus doesn't expect us to be discerning in who we offer good news to. When Jesus goes on to explain the parable, he says that the seed is the word about the kingdom, or a word about the kingdom, which is a little bit vague, uh, as Jesus can be sometimes to leave things open to interpretation. But I think that can mean a lot of things. But at least in part, when I think about the kingdom of God, I think about God's vision for the world, where everyone has a place of belonging, and everyone has the realization that they are made in the image of God, and that we begin to treat each other like that. I think that's the kingdom of God that Jesus is trying to bring about. And so what I think Jesus is encouraging us to do is to scatter hope and good news about that kingdom as liberally as we possibly can. And that can be really tough in a place like Santa Cruz County, where if you don't know, our resources are a bit strained, especially when it comes to folks who are in need. Um, we want to be wise with the way that we use our resources. It can feel like the need is greater than the resources that we have. There was a study that came out just this week uh, that showed that Santa Cruz County is the least affordable rental market in all of California. Uh, so wages compared to how much rent costs, least affordable. Um, we also have one of the highest populations of people experiencing homelessness. Uh, it's just a really tough environment. So. Our natural mindset often will go to, okay, how do we keep our resources and kind of hoard them? How do we use them wisely? Uh, because we certainly can't do anything or everything. But what I love about this idea of Jubilee that you all have been talking about is that there is a complete lack of conventional wisdom in it from where I'm sitting. Uh, forgiving debts doesn't seem like a particularly wise thing to do if you're worried about your, your pocketbook. Offering mercy and grace and love to everyone around us can feel like a tall task. But there is a key assumption that takes a lot of faith, I think, behind this parable. And that is that there is enough to go around. So this farmer is spreading seed, hope, and good news as if he will never run out of it. If you truly believe that there is enough hope and goodness in the world then it doesn't matter if you throw a little bit on the road and a bird gets a little bit of it, or if it doesn't take with someone, because you know that God has enough hope and good news for all of us. And I think that's what we're asked to do in this parable, is to believe that once we throw all the seed out we have, we can go back and grab some more, because God has an endless well of it. We can be terrible farmers, if you will. Now, uh, I have found that this is really the only way that I can function in a healthy way in my work with our unhoused neighbors. Uh, because what it does is it takes the pressure off of us. We are not responsible for whether or not the seed takes. What God is calling us to is to offer it liberally and offer it to everyone we can. And so, in my world, what I can do is offer every person I interact with dignity, my time, whatever resources I can connect them to, and I desperately hope that that takes, that that seed sinks in, that they experience a little bit more of the kingdom of God, the sense of they're made in the image of God, and that propels them to move towards wholeness and hopefully housing. But it doesn't always take. About half of our folks move to housing and uh, experience a better quality of life, and the other half, unfortunately, uh, aren't quite there yet. 
And some of that is outside of my control. It's outside of all of our controls. But what I can do is know that I have offered them the hope that Jesus is calling us to. And there are going to be other farmers down the road continuing to offer them that same hope. And hopefully, it will take eventually. Something will sink in. And so I celebrate when things go well, and I mourn when things don't go as I hope they would. But at the end of the day, all I can do is continue, all we can do is continue to scatter good news and hope as liberally as possible. Now, of course, sometimes it does take, and these are the moments that kind of ground my faith. Uh, I was talking recently to a shelter member, a former shelter member named Randy. Um, Randy left our shelter about six months after I started, so he's been out of the shelter about a year and a half, two years. Um, Randy's story is really interesting. He grew up over the hill in San Jose. Uh, his dad was a college professor, and so he had what many of us would consider a pretty stable, kind of consistent life. He was a really creative kid and a creative guy and developed a passion for music. He began actually becoming a touring musician and worked with artists who ended up going on to write uh, for pop stars like Mariah Carey, so kind of impressive stuff. But somewhere along the way, he developed um, a reliance and addiction on substances, and his life derailed. Um, normally, that's where I interact with folks, is that sort of derailing. But what happened with Randy is he actually got himself clean and sober, and then got his life back on track along with his partner, Sophie. And so his life stabilized for a bit. But then, tragically, his partner, Sophie, passed away and his life again destabilized. And along that way, he lost his housing. Because like so many uh, folks in our area, if you lose your partner, you lose your ability to afford housing. And so he began just kind of scrounging, trying to find any housing he could, but eventually ended up on the street. Uh, he didn't spend a lot, a lot of time there, but it was a particularly traumatic time for him. He recounts that he happened to be on the street when we had a rare Santa Cruz thunderstorm. Uh, and it was a truly terrible experience. So he sought out shelter and he ended up in AFC's nightly rotating shelter. Now, you know, things didn't turn around immediately, but what happened was he began to stabilize. He came into the shelter right about the time the pandemic was starting and things were kind of locking down. And he was at the United Methodist Church, where we were sheltering in place on the west side of Santa Cruz. They happened to have an extra room that they thought we should dedicate to an art studio. So Randy began to spend his days in the art studio painting. And this spark of creativity that he had began to reignite. And he would put his emotions and his feelings and his experiences down on canvas. And all of a sudden, he became a different person. He had this joy, this sense of meaning, this sense of purpose. And what often happens is once you get a little momentum, once you get a sense of purpose, you begin to have the strength to move forward. Once you regain your sense that you are made in the image of God, then all of a sudden, you have the ability to, and the energy, to focus on things like housing. And so Randy began to put his name on every wait list he possibly could in Santa Cruz County. And within a few months, which is shorter than it normally takes, uh, he got an affordable unit and moved into permanent housing, uh, which is normally where we sort of like celebrate. And that's kind of where the story ends for us. Um, and it was a beautiful, great moment. But what I love about Randy's story is that he kind of kept that momentum going. He continued his passion for painting and began just painting prolifically, piling up paintings all over the place. Uh, and it culminated this past December on a first Friday when he got to have his first gallery show on a first Friday. Uh, and he invited everybody that he knew, and so I had the privilege of attending, and I was walking through with him as he was explaining each of the paintings to me. Some of them were kind of trippy because he will paint his dreams, and so they're really interesting, unique things but it felt like such a milestone. It felt like this turning point for him. And he described it to me in a way that um, was really beautiful. He said, this art exhibit was such an accomplishment. 
It symbolized turning such a terrible experience into something positive. It made the world a little bit of a better place. What I love about Randy's story is it shows me the power of Jesus' parable here. The power of believing that there is more than enough to go around. So that when we offer hope, and that hope takes and sinks in somewhere, that person blossoms, and then they have something to offer to the next person down the road. And that is how I believe God works to develop God's kingdom. So when we scatter hope liberally, we can then offer it to other people. So I am grateful for you all doing that this month and every Monday night. I hope that we can do that together, that we have the courage to be, as I would say, terrible farmers. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Let us uh, respond. I invite you to stand as you're able. And we'll sing together. seated.
We have the privilege to participate in communion this morning, and the table is open to all who profess faith in Jesus Christ. This is our Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast he has prepared. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Will you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, blessed forever, to you be praise and honor for giving yourself, shedding your blood, and letting your body be broken in death for our sake, so that we might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Bless, O God, this bread which we together eat and the cup which we together drink. Let us through this blessed bread and this blessed cup become partakers of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I will pass the bread first, and please take as you're comfortable, uh, and then pass the plate on, and then uh, hang on to the bread, and we'll take it all together uh, after everyone has received some. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you.
body of Christ or the blood of Christ shed for you. Join me in prayer once more. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you've graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Give us now your peace and grant us strength and courage through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we will sing the doxology together. The words are on the screen. Uh, we'll sing this a cappella, as is our tradition. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. If you'd receive my blessing this morning, go ahead and just lay your hands out in front of you as such. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We'll see you next week, Community Covenant.